uh, it's been a while since I did a YouTube video, but I want to show off the progress that's been made. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you happen to know that I work on the game all the time. It's several times during the week I update with uh, either screenshots or small little tidbits as to what I'm working on, or sometimes it's kind of some, some uh, hints as to what's going to be in the game. So I encourage you all to follow me on Twitter, at TrueFun202, and that way... Uh, you don't have to worry about so much time being in between uh, video updates. You can see uh, in real time what I'm working on. Uh, but today I want to cover uh, three big topics. Uh, the new color adjustment system has been implemented so that each map can have its own distinct look and feel. So we're sticking with the same four color palette of the Game Boy, but to give each level its own uh, kind of mood and setting, we're adjusting the hue of the level and also things like the contrast, the saturation, and the brightness to really give each, each level its own, you know, kind of tone and mood. Um, and second, we're going to look at the new copy-paste feature of the editor and uh, how helpful that's been for us. And then finally, we're going to look at a very pre-alpha version of the first level. So what you're going to see is all original graphics, all uh, original sound and music, as well as enemies that have been implemented using my nifty enemy system that I talked about in a, a video or two ago. So anyways, uh, a lot to show off, so let's get started. All right, so here we are in the editor, and you can see we have the default Game Boy Green color palette loaded in. And there will indeed be at least one level that uses this color palette, because after all, we're still doing an homage to the Game Boy. But as the game progresses, we wanted to give each of those levels a distinct look and feel. And we're going to achieve that by adjusting the hue and color settings of that color palette. So let's take a look at how that's done. There's a new XML file that gets generated out of the editor. Uh, and it has this hue setting where you can adjust the red, green, and blue values, where you can adjust each of these between 0 and 255. And then the color adjustments, you can set the contrast, saturation, brightness, and darkness. And each of these values can be between 0 and 1. So as a simple example, I'm going to set the green and blue values to zero, leaving only red at 255. So that's the only color that's going to come through in the hue. So I'm going to reload my map. There you go. You can see I completely changed the look and feel of my map just by changing that color up. And now it kind of looks like a Virtual Boy game or something. But uh, simple little changes that, that completely change the level. So let's take a look at some of these more advanced settings. So I'm going to set the contrast to 0.75 and let's move the saturation to let's say 35, uh, 0.35. So save that and reload our level. There you go. It's a much darker tone. We've completely changed the feel of this level from what it originally was. Uh, it's got a much darker, more gritty look. And this is exactly what the art director was looking for. So once he's built his tiles out, once he's built the level, he can really get the mood and the tone just right by changing these color settings. So this was fun to implement. I had to do a little uh, research on some color math, uh, and it all worked out. So let's take a look at that nifty copy-paste feature. All right, so I reloaded my map, and I went ahead and reset the uh, color adjustments so that we're looking at the base palette. Um, so for the copy-paste feature, to give you a little background, the art director came to me and he said, we need a way to easily drop an entire collection of tiles onto the map. Uh, for example, there are several monuments or maybe some big flame animations that consist of several tiles. So recreating that several times in the level would just be tedious to drag and drop for every tile. And we came up with a, a couple solutions, and one was to have a single tile represent a collection of tiles and that would have worked but it was pretty tedious to set up and overall it would be something that's too uh, complicated to worry about so instead what I offered up is how about a copy paste feature so you go ahead and lay down the tiles once then you can drag and copy those and then paste those as many times as you want so to show this off let's go ahead and select the layer that we want in this case it's the background turn on the copy paste mode and I'm gonna copy these curtains and do control C to copy and there we go now I can paste these as many times as I'd like in the level and uh, this is huge this way we can have some really complicated things and just turn out a level 
quite quickly. As you can see, let me zoom in on these flames. As you can see, these flames are pretty cool and they, they consist of several tiles. And uh, now we can easily drag and drop those in. So you can see there's a couple other places where these flames are. And uh, I was pretty proud of this. The fact that you can make the copy as long as as big as you want so it doesn't have to be just a small area you can copy an entire section of a level and then paste it over so pretty cool stuff it's definitely useful and I have to give props to uh, Marcel from the Adventures in Game Development because he implemented something very similar to this and I actually went back to that video and watched it and it was uh, it was helpful and inspirational so kudos on that uh, up next we're gonna take a look at this level in action this is the first uh, level. It's very pre-alpha, but there's quite a bit to show off, and uh, we're also going to listen to some amazing sound effects and music from Phantom and K. So, enjoy. <laughs> 